I'm like, come on, here we go. Hi, everyone. This is Sipping and Spilling the Tea with Riviera and special guest Latika Charles. And she's going to be talking to us about financial finances, building good business credit and be financially responsible and all good tips and advice when it comes to having good credit. So, Tika, hi, how are you? I'm pretty well. I'm wealthy. How about yourself? Girl, I hear that. Bless. And yes, wealthy. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Last time I did a podcast, I talked highly about you. Um, oh, thank you. Anybody who asked me about you always said, like, she's, oh my gosh, she's a soul sister. She empowered women and she is a prayer warrior. Like, if you need her to pray for you, she she is there. You're very uh, intelligent, and I admire everything that you do and all the knowledge that you pass to me and to others, especially Black women uh -huh. in, you know, in our community. So, thank you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Revere. Thank you, Queen. Thank you for having me. Um, um, it's an honor to be here on your platform. So, um. Uh, Thank you, first and foremost, for uh, inviting me because uh, this is just another uh, platform to just get the word out, to teach more people about financial literacy. Uh, we weren't taught these things in school, so that's one of the reasons why I got more involved in um, understanding credit, understanding business uh, alone. I have a business degree. I have a degree in business as well, um, but with so much with me with um, working at a nine to five that I was working at for a while, I never really used it. So um, I'm, now is the time, you know, now is the time for us to uh, understand what financial literacy and how credit, how we can use credit as a way to um, make us more money. You know, we need capital. Anybody that knows if you want to start a business or whatever, you have to have money to start a business. And um, credit is just another way that you can utilize credit as a way to gain more capital or gain more money so you can fund your business by using other people's money. I hear that. Let's, girl, go in more detail about that. <laughs> using other people's money. Because a lot of us, it's hard. We're not, uh, we're not making a six figures on a paycheck. We're working at probably McDonald's, Taco Bell, or a waitressing job, or you know, factory, and we don't have the money to put up to get LLCs or to start our business. So, that is no. true, you know. So that's one of the reasons why it's important that you just start working on, get, uh, for one, getting your personal credit together, and then as well, um, building a business, uh, establishing business first, and then working on getting your business credit together. That way, you can go and um, fund your business because nine times out of ten, uh, sometimes, well, anytime you start up a business, it's going to cost. It's going to cost yes. more money. And then how would you be able to become successful in your business by using the money that you, you have to start your business? You're, it's going to, you're just going to be in a circle. It's going to be over and over where you won't be able to gain success because you're still using the money that you profit into investing. Well, if you establish your business credit, mm -hmm. uh, you can go and take out a nice amount of uh, a loan to uh, fund your business so that profit comes you'll be able to spend it back put utilize it to go back into your business and you'll be able to take care of that loan that you just take out you just took out to expand your business so um that's basically what it is financial literacy like i said we were not taught these things in school that's one of the reasons why i got involved in to get learn more because people perish without the lack, lack the lack of knowledge uh, yes. What we don't know, we just don't know. So the more that we understand and the more that we have knowledge and wisdom and understanding, it'll give us prosperity. Yes. Yes. I I agree with you 100%. I really do. Um, so when people who have credit scores, let's say 400, 400 credit score, that's that's bad. I know there's some people who got 300 and there's some people who don't have credit yes. at all. Can you please explain, like, how can they raise their credit score from 300, 400 to, to that 700? Well, you want to, um, 
honestly, um, credit, all credit is is trust. Uh, just to break it down to the, the simplest form of understanding, credit is trust. If a company or if a bank can trust you with that their money, you'll be able to gain access to more of their money. and You'll be able to use their money instead of using your money, which is what I say, others people money. Um, to establish the perfect credit score, you have to have at least 680, well, 700 plus. You will want to be in that price. You want to be in that range, that price range, in order for you to be approved for um, low interest rates for loans, or you know, you don't have to put too much nothing down. You know, so yeah. and you be able to use other people's money. So I would encourage people if you have a, a 500, 400, you know, you have to if you have any negative items that are on your report, you have to get those disputed to be deleted. Um, majority of those goes to collections, which is no longer yours because they don't already sold it to a third party, which is why you have access to dis dispute those or send in the letter to get those deleted. It's no yes. longer yours. So that's the first thing you want to do. You want to get those items off of your port. Anything that is negative increase, anything that is on your report, you want to get those deleted. Then, so let me break down credit. Credit is broken down into five key components so you can have yeah. a better understanding. 35% of your credit is your payment history. So it is isn't very important, you know, that you you make payments on time if you have credit cards, if you have uh, anything of that form where there's a payment, you want to make sure that you're making no payments on time. 30% is your amounts owed, so your debt that you have. 15 is your length of credit history. That is important. Well, it's only 15%, but... Um, if you're trying to establish um, perfect credit, you will want people to be able, can I trust you? How long has yeah. you had this credit? How long has it been in good standing? 10% is your types of credit and 10% of new credit. While you're working on credit, don't go to Victoria's Secret. Don't go in, they mm -hmm. ask you for a card. Don't try to apply for anything because you're in a process of working on it and building it. So you don't want to have add on those extra inquiries on your credit report while you're trying to restore it. Now, yes. once you get those things deleted, sometimes your credit score will go down off the strength because you need to build your credit. Yes. Now, the same as having no credit is the same as bad credit. So if you don't yes. have no credit, it's just the same as bad credit. And what you need to do then is build your credit. How do you build your credit? You have to have trade lines or secure yes. credit, secure credit cards. And you have to keep your utilization low, no longer than over the 30%. It's a mouthful. It's so much to explain. But once you understand credit and understand how credit works, you can use credit to help you gain other money. Mm, yes, because we want to spend the bank's money, not our own money, because a lot of us, again, we just we don't have the funds to do that. Yes. You and, know? you know, so. With, when you understand that and then when you build in your credit. So, like I said, let's say. If someone has a, I'm going to give y'all this, this cute, this cue right here, or this trick It's called a 15, three rule. So let's mm -hmm. say you have a car note, a car note, yeah. and you have financed this car. So, you know, if you are late, if you're behind or late on your car note, uh, it will be reported and your credit courts, credit score will go down. So you do this trick. Let's say you have a car note for three hundred dollars right mm -hmm. okay so 15 days 15 days before your due date before you know it's time for you to pay your car note you want to pay 150 dollars first so pay 150 dollars oh. okay. 15 days before your um car note their due date then three days before your actual car note you want to pay the remaining 150 dollars Mm. That would trigger the system to make it seem as though you're making two payments within one month. Okay, I I never knew that. Never. Yes, it's the fifteen three rule. You want to use that. So if anybody use that, because it'll help even on mortgage. If you have a mortgage, split it, pay half mm. of it at one time and then half of it. But you want to make sure don't ever pay it on the due date because it's going to take a time to process. So my time and process, you know, I want it to fall back late. 
Oh, see, never knew that. I always thought like pay it on time, pay it on time. Never thought it never crossed my mind to always pay it ahead of time. Yes. Or break up the payments. We're always used to the full amount. Otherwise, if we don't pay the full amount, we get fees or repossession. So yes. it's always that fear mentality. So it's like rush, rush, pay it, pay it all at once. And yeah. No, nope. so, split it. If you split it that way, you pay one fifty. You know, fifteen days before, then three days before the real, the original due date. Pay the other half, so it was trigger the system. As one, you will always be on time. And mm -hmm. I also highly, highly, highly encourage everybody. This is not just with credit. This is just with paying your bills. Start putting your stuff on automatic. Start mm. setting it up where it's automatically coming out of your account, so you're never on. So you're never late when paying your bills. Hmm. When you're never late for paying yeah. your bills, see, that's one thing. Credit restoration is one thing that I teach, but financial literacy is in whole. We have to understand how money works. For one, we cannot be afraid of money. Money is yeah. an energy. You know what I'm saying? So when you understand these things and then you understand that you use money as a tool, money will come back to you. Money will flow mm. back to you. So that's one thing that you have to understand. Use, let's use, understand how credit works. Yeah. And then yeah. let's utilize credit yeah. as a way that we can get up. So we can yeah. have access to uh, leave a legacy for our children's children. That's what it's all about. Ooh, yes. Yes, girl, say it. Say it again. <laughs> yes, it's our it's children. Very, yes. If COVID, you know, we've been dealing, we all as a whole, we've been dealing with so much stuff going on. We've been losing a lot of family members, a lot of family, you know, due to this uh this illness out here. But um COVID set the term term. When I mean what I mean by uh, a lot of people lost jobs. You yes. know what I'm saying? A lot of people have lost jobs, lost their income. And to be honest, this was a way just to wake you up. This Now we have to have multiple streams of income. Now we cannot, the COVID showed us that we cannot just depend on one job. Sure if we can. didn't bring out the hustle out of you, then I don't know what it's going to take. Right. But this is the time where it's time. Okay, you know what? I'm going to need a, another, a, a couple multiple streams of income. Let me find, let me get my hustle on. Let me find something. Let me go back to school and learn something. Yeah. You know, to add to my resume or add to my business portfolio. But. Like I said, y'all, this COVID stuff, it impacted us in many other ways. But one thing that it has taught me or told me, like, okay, it's time to get your grind on, Tika. You can't just depend on no job. You need to come up and create other multiple streams of income because if something like this was to happen again, well, what can I fall on? Yes. And I agree with you 100%. It's like we forgot about having that security net. We're so focused on having money quickly and then we as soon as we get it we spend it yeah never especially in our community uh we're not taught to invest we're not taught to you know put aside for a rainy day and don't touch it mm -hmm. you know or focus on what you need not so much of what you want we never we it's just like oh i want these nice shoes i want this good car so let's let me hurry spend it and then when the pandemic ha happened, none of us couldn't pay our bills. You know, a lot of things got shut down and it was just, we was out of luck. Yes. And that's why it is so important. Like, you know, like you just said, a rainy day. I don't like to use rainy days because I'm a positive person. So I kind of mm. changed to like, instead of saying rainy <laughs> day, we don't have a saving funds. We don't mm. have something to save, not just to save, but to invest. Because if you just set your money in a bank account, it's not going to give you accumulate enough money. It's years, you know, it's not going to really, it's not going to really add value. But what you want to do yeah. is save so you can invest. You go and make yeah. investments. Learn about other other ways that you can get into stocks or this Bitcoin, uh, uh, for, uh, 
currency exchange. You know, it's so many different investments that we can get into. And um, life insurance policies, people don't talk about that. People don't talk about IULs. People don't talk about a lot of stuff, a lot of ways where we can use our money as an investment. That way we want to make our money work for us so we're not always trading our time yes. for money. You want to make your money work for yourself. So how do you do that? Investing. Find yes. other things of investing. Find ways to invest your money instead of just saving your money. Yes. Yes. And what you what can you give us like a little tips? Like how what can we look for to get like a good investment? Or what because a lot of us don't know how to invest and what to invest in that will create good capital. Well, before I got it started in this, I learned so much more about life insurance policies. Um, life insurance policies, you know, is to protect you or whatever your access or whatever that you have. But one thing that I've learned about policies is that you can make these investments into your policy. And let's say, for an example, um, my daughter, I'm just using this as an example. I don't want nobody to come and search for me, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'll be making a policy once a month to put into my life insurance policy. Mm. By the time that my daughter is 18, there there's an, a decent amount of money that I can pull out of that policy and don't have to pay it back and go and make an investment. Whether I want that to be her first investment of property or if I want her to purchase her first car, I can pull out a decent amount of lump sum that I do not have to pay back. That is one example that you can use a life insurance policy to literally just put your money in a savings so it can double itself, the value. Flip it, keep flipping it, keep flipping it. That's one example. People don't talk about that because people are not thinking ahead. We all, like we you just not. said earlier, we always focus on right now, right now, right now, where where the things are right now. We know that death is promised for all of us. Yes. So we know yeah. that if we have children, we want to try to leave something behind for them so they can always have something. They will never have to uh, struggle the way that we struggle when we go through situations like this. You know, so that's one way of investing. There's ways that you can invest your money into banks. Um, mm. it, there, I have so many resources that I have connected myself with that um, teaches me these things. And that's something yes. that it is important that we start learning more about these things and how to uh, flip our money and let our money work for us. Yes. Yes. I agree with you totally. Um, when you do the insurance, how is it just any insurance like Liberty that you could just they could contact and reach and, you know, ask questions to um, how can you start that process. So I'm no, I'm not a, an agent, so I can't really speak too much on it, but I do know people, uh, Prime America, I know a couple people that can, that can reconnect you to those type <laughs> of information so you can know, but uh, research. If you don't know, mm -hmm. always find out how, you know, start researching about uh, Transamerica. There's different um, avenues that you could go from there. But like I said, life insurance, that's just one thing that a lot of people don't know about that we yes. should be learning more about these things. You know, uh, cryptocurrency, that's another thing, just foreign exchange. Mm -hmm. I'm learning now, so I can't speak too much because I'm learning for myself. But this is also another way of making money. Mm. See? Investing. See, and I don't know anything about crypto uh, currency, but I it just is everywhere. That's all you hear, and that's all you see. It's like invest, invest in this. This is a new way for my money. How do you feel about gold or type of metal, silver, coins, and stuff like that, or loose diamonds is that something people should be interested in investment or you just feel like uh you know i believe really. so, you know the value of our dollar is depreciating 
if you haven't noticed, but um, gold, uh, water is going to be soon our new currency. You know, it, it's just crazy. I, I'm just saying that. I'm just speaking all <laughs> ahead because if you look at how things are right now, yeah. we don't really value stuff like that. But right now, gold, yeah. silver, all of that, it is important right now. That's probably one of the smartest things to be in investing yeah. because, yeah. Uh, like I said, the dollar is appreciate. Our dollar value is going down. You know, no it's yeah. about it. That's why they say this Bitcoin stuff is it, it, that alone is kind of just scary. You know, with technology, the way that things is right now, um, you just always want to try to be ahead of the curve because so much stuff is changing. So much things is going on in our lives where we have to learn these things because yes. if not, we'll be left behind. Yes. Yes. So I got to ask you what things. What items can we remove off our credit report? Five oh, things that we can. Any student loans, medical bills. Now, when I talk about student loans, because a lot of people will be like, what student loans? Look, if you are in good standing in your credit, in your student loan, it cannot be removed because you done already made an agreement that you're and you're in good standing. So that's like you either in forbearance, you even got a hold on it or you don't made an agreement where you make your payments on time those so you're in good standing we cannot get those disputed to be deleted but if you check your credit report and your student loan is dinging you it's on there where you behind because you haven't made a payment those can be deleted medical medical bills can be deleted uh bankruptcy can be deleted all of those stuff can be deleted Credit is just, uh, oh my gosh, y'all don't want to go too deep into credit, but when there's an, when you have anything in collection, they done sold it to a third party. They have 30 days. So when you go and send the letter to their credit bureau, they have 30 days, 30 to 45 days to respond to say, hey, this is yours. But technically nine times out of 10, they done already sold it to a third party. So they'll have to show proof that this is still yours. Wow. See, we don't know that. A lot of people, we, you know, we fall behind and we don't pay medical bills. You know, we lack, some of us don't, we can't get health insurance. And if we do get it, it's too, it's too expensive uh -huh. and things happen. And then it ends up on our credit report. And when they call, you know, we, the first thing we say is, yeah, this is she, this is he. And that's how, that's how they get us. Yeah. I don't even... <laughs> I don't even ask them phone calls to be honest. No, because I uh, -uh that in mind, you have to show proof. Mm. You know, so you know, like I said, the more we know, the more we know how to handle these things. But I honestly, once this in collection is no longer yours, you're gonna have to prove to me that this is mine before I see here and say, yeah, this is mine. Even then, sometimes some people like to just um, pay their debt off. That's yeah. fine if you're likely and you're choosing. But once you pay it off, your credit will still go down. Because you actually closed that account. What? Yeah. I so thought you, once you pay it, it goes, you know, you get a point or, you know, because it's paid, it's paid off. Uh -oh. And I thought, you, well, you know, it's still on your credit report. So once you close an account, anytime you close an account, it will, your score will go down. That's mm. why now that you, you know, you get things off, now you want to build it. How you build it is because you want to make payments on time. You want to get, um, if you're new, get self-lender or um, self-lender where you basically pay yourself. You pay a monthly fee um, a month. And then mm. let's say after nine months, 10 months, however you're likely, whatever you decide to choose, they'll send you a check for all the times that you make these monthly payments on time. And every time that you make the monthly payments a month, it'll be reported to your credit. It'll go, it'll be reported mm. to increase your credit score. See, and that's what they don't teach us. Like we said before in the beginning, they never teach us in schools. They teach us all this other stuff, but they never inform us about how to prepare us for the world. They don't. And honestly, the way how the school system is set up, it has just taught us to work for someone else. Yes. That's the whole, it is just, the, the whole system is backwards. The whole system is messed up. They want us to um, work how, you know, it's just... So we go to school mm -hmm. to get in debt. Yes. To go to college. 
Yes. And then go and pay off that. It's so backwards. It just don't make sense when it comes to mm-hmm. thinking about the way the education system is set up. It is so wrong. It is so backwards. But that's why we have to understand a lot of things that we have to do. We have to unlearn the things that we were taught. Mm. We have yes. to really unlearn a lot of things that we were taught in order for us to get the light bulb to be like, oh my, that makes so much sense. A yes. lot of people yes. would not tell you, hey, you know what, what dreams that you used to have when you were younger or what is it that you want to be when you will grow up? Let's work towards that. Go master that so you can learn how to make wealth for yourself so you can learn how to make money so you don't have to work for nobody else. They're not going to teach us that. They don't. They never teach us that. And like you said, it. you you said it perfectly. You know, we are designed to go to school and then work for somebody else. We were never taught that we could own our own company. And if we are taught some things, it's only, you know, Black men is only taught to, you know, be a rapper or an athlete, and you know, and that's a whole different story. And when it comes <laughs> to black women, I mean, you see us in the medical field as CNAs and nurses and things like that. We we got that pack, but you don't. They don't really put us out there like, hey, you go own your own clinic. You go own your own. You know, whatever you want, you could you could own it, and you can have good credit. They don't teach mm-hmm. us that. Yep, that's why it's important for us to. Um, start preparing to leave a legacy for our children's children. Now it's time for us to understand, like, hold on, let's break these uh, generational curses. Let's break what we have been taught our entire lives. Let's break that and let's start off something new. COVID, like I said, it was a curse and a blessing because at the same time, more millionaires are forming in these times of trouble, in these times of famine, because it's a lot of problems that has caused or some problems. Entrepreneurs are just problem solvers or millionaires are problem solvers. Like who created a car? Who created a plane? Mm. Who created a TV? It was a problem that was solved and it just created wealth. And that's where we have to get in a mentality of right now. Like there's so many problems around here that we can solve that will create us, that will create wealth for us. And I like when you said that problem, it's a problem solving. And a lot of people, they want to open up their own business. And for one, they don't know how to go about it. They're not educated in it. And two, it's like, okay, I want to be an entertainer or whatever, but nobody won't sign me. Nobody won't do this. So it's like, okay, what can I do? Be independent. Okay. Now I have to think about funding. I got to think about my credit. Who's going to help me reach this? And then some people get so discouraged. They're just like, no, let me go work somewhere else. And, you know, just keep collecting nine to five. That gives up so quickly. Yeah. But you know what? The difference between a successful person and an unsuccessful person is successful people do what unsuccessful people don't want to do. Yes. It is consistency. If you do not quit or you do not give up, you will never you you how, you will never fail. Long as you yes. don't quit, you keep picking at it, you keep going, you keep going. I remember seeing a meme or some type of video where there was a uh, two men digging. I pre- you probably saw this two men digging and in a uh, tunnel and one of them kept digging and the other one stopped, but there was like a big diamond um right right before mm. the man stopped you could see it but he turned away and he walked away and then the other guy just kept going at it and he got he reached it that was the difference had he just had hit and kept going a little bit longer he would have seen the success yeah. he would have received that big diamond as well and that's one thing when it comes to never giving up just long as you keep going yeah. consistency and discipline is key uh, mm. a lot of people started off small A lot of people did not know because, like I said, people perish for the lack of knowledge. We just don't know. Yes. But once you know or once you understand, one thing I always say is once your mind is stretched, you can never go back to small thinking. Mm. Yes, that's true. You can never go back to small thinking because that's like... um, you just can't because you don't learn something or like if, once you see something, you can never unsee it. Yes. You yes. know what I'm saying? Yes. So once you learn something, 
you will never go back to small thinking because this is something new to you. Oh my gosh, I never know. I never thought about this. Yes. What can I do? You want to learn more? Well, for me, I love learning. I don't watch TV. I will sit Google. That's my best friend. Like a lot of people will go to school. Yes. I will go to Google, YouTube. Heart of my yes. life <laughs> from my yes. own experience, or I will get on Google and I will research and I'll figure yes. it out because that is all you need to know. Get on there and figure research. That is so true. And I'm I'm with you. Google is my best friend. I always like, okay, let me type how I do this, I do that, and let me watch the video, YouTube, and see, like, okay, this and that. So it's like there's no excuse for you to be successful. There's no excuse for us, you know, to be get connected, do networking and have resources and connect with people that could lead us or, you know, help us, you know, to get where we need to where we need to go. And the other question I want to ask you when it comes to us creating a good business and, you know, and opening up a, a great business relationships, a lot of people feel some some do you know some don't will say i can't be in a relationship due to i'm trying to create something and being a relationship is a distraction if i want to be successful if i want to be that millionaire that billionaire if i want to create this legacy i have to detach from people How you know you i have a couple ways of thinking about that because for one in order for you to become successful, re money comes through people. Mm. One of the most important things that we have to have is relationship. God mm. is love. So we have yes. to be able to understand to work with individuals. Money, come on now, money flow through people. It In does. order for you to become a millionaire, there's a product, there's a service, and you're going to have to talk to people. Communities like customer service is number one. Yes. So when it comes to relationship, you have to have relationship. You can't go without having some type of relationship. Relationship is important. God created us, you know, us, mm -hmm. love, mm -hmm. through relationship, through people. So um, I don't see how you could ever, anybody could get in business without understanding that you have to have relationship. Now, far as a relationship with a couple or whatever you want to make sure that you're equally yoked mm. because you can have someone who could be intimidated by your success or they see you got it going on and they looking at themselves like well i ain't doing nothing and some people can stop yeah. you from growing however yes. you if you have someone that is just as equally yoked or they run in a lane and you run in your lane where y'all running together where you know, y'all focus on tunnel vision and you want to have a helpmate that's going to help increase you to go towards your purpose, not distract you. Now, you can have some people in your life that's going to distract you. Now, if they distract you, then they ain't your right partner. Then I want to say, you know what? This ain't for me. I'm going to stay in my lane over here. I don't need you in my life right now because you stopping what I got going on. Yes, yes, girl. Speak, speak. <laughs> yes, speak. A lot of people don't know how to determine. They don't have to separate the two. They don't know how to determine which person is which. So they just like skip it. I'm. I just. Yes, don't you know, you have to pray for uh, the spirit of discernment because that will help you to understand and identify who's right for me and who's not right for me. If they're taking you away off of your goals of what you have set for yourself, then that is just a yes. distraction. Yes. There's just no way as buts about it. There's a distraction. Yes. You have people that add them to you, then you have people who subtract from you. If you have people in your life that's taking away from you, them not the right ones that you want to have. That's sure. what start praying for divine connection. Start praying for people that's gonna come into your life that have what you need. Mm. You have what you you have what they need and they yes. have what you need. And that's to get the power of exchange. Yes, girl. <laughs> yes, I I girl. Yes, you just said something like that. And it's we you have to pray. You have to. And yes. prayer is power.
Oh, girl. Without yes. prayer, there's no power. You know, little yes. prayer, little power. No prayer, no power at all. Mm -hmm. um and i'm gonna stand on it i'm definitely a one a woman of god um there's no way that i will not be without here without you know christ you know we just celebrated oh, yes. christmas yesterday and i'm still in awe in a moment because of the miracles the powers you yes. know a lot of people we yes we get it you know presence to spend the time with yeah. family but there's a deeper meaning you know the biggest yeah. miracle is the jesus christ and the power that we all have that same power we have that power to create well we have that power to have prosperity you know it's just this year has taught me so much this year and looking forward into 2022 has my mind is just on cloud nine right girl now. yes yes <laughs> you you said it you said it i i believe next year is gonna be um better yes. bigger you yes. know more open more opportunity one of the reasons why let me i just gotta speak on this because i'm so um the poor mindset yes. you know we don't we us we understand um poor is mm -hmm. a spirit you know we've been trapped and we thought of certain things or so it's been conditioned from our uh ancestors or you know our bloodline that you know we have a spirit of poverty that we have to break oh we have yes. to break the, the the spirit of poverty yes. off of our lives and it's really because we just don't know or we're afraid mm. Mm. we are you can't have yes. fear fear and faith cannot be together it's either one Ooh. You can't have both. You have to either do you have faith or do you have fear? COVID, that's the spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. It will stop us from doing things because it's fear. When you have faith and understand that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, you know, I can walk, you know, the same way you can walk on water. You have to have faith that's going to push you. Yes. So yes. we have to break this poverty mindset. We can't just keep being afraid of opportunities. One thing they say, poor, what poor means, passing over opportunities repeatedly. Ooh, girl, say that again. That's what you poor is. That's, that's, that's a tweet. That's a Facebook post. You need to post that on Facebook. Say yes. that one more time. Passing over opportunities repeatedly. And we always get caught up with, oh my gosh, I think it's a scam. What is your meaning? It's an opportunity that has given to you, but you didn't choose to because you, for one, was afraid. Somebody yeah. done told you it was a scam. You think somebody wants your money. And there you go. You missed the opportunity where you can make more money or an additional stream of income because you are afraid. Yes. And sometimes we allow others to influence our decisions. That's what I and, told you. Yeah, we allow others, and then we allow our pride and ego getting away also. And I, for destruction. Yes, and I remember reading this article. This uh, newswoman, I you probably seen it too. So it was floating around Facebook also. Um, she asked Bill Gates a question. She was like, "How how do you become you know successful?" And he gave her a check. She gave the check back. And then she asked him the same question and he gave her a check and she gave it back. She's like, no, no, I want your, you know, she's like, what? No, I want your money. That's not, how did you become successful? And he gave it to her one more time and she rejected it. And he said, you never miss an opportunity. And I was thinking to myself, let him give me a check. I would have been like $5 million. <laughs> what you want to invest in? Here, here yes. you go, sir. Can you put a signature in here? that is so true we we miss yes. opportunities and we miss these moments because we are afraid or yes. you know we just feel like because of the norm you know it's just so much stuff that i'm learning right now that lets us know like look one thing the difference between a poor set you can be broke and there's a difference between broke and a poor mindset broke is temporary Ooh. yes broke is temporary like okay let's say you know you don't paid all your bills for the first so you're broke, but it's temporary because you know you're going to get some money. Now, yes. having a poor mindset, you're going to forever be poor. 
Yes, you want to that mindset is just stuck there. You will never grow because that's where your structure, that's where your mind at. We have to renew our mind and we have to unlearn the things that we were taught. That is so true because we always have that uh, negative mindset that where we feel like we can't. Like, oh, when we pay a bill, I'm broke. If I pay this bill, I ain't gonna have no more money, and I ain't gonna be able to do this, I ain't do that. We always think negative, and when we become negative and we get in that mind, that mind frame, we don't do nothing about it. We don't, we just sit there and we wait for a handout, we wait for someone to come rescue us instead of coming up with solutions to be like, okay. Let me rebudget or let me get my finances together. Let me think like, okay, everything is paid. Be happy that you pay that bill. Be happy that you paying bills for you to have a house over your head, that you could be able to talk on your phone. We be so negative about paying bills and we get mad when we get evicted. We get mad when our car get repossessed. We get so upset when our credit scores is low because we refuse to pay our bills in the first place. You know, I want to hit on this because I'm going biblical now because it's just me and it's just structured. The Lord has freely I give, freely I receive. If you want, if you're, if anybody that is facing or dealing with poverty right now, you want to understand how to come out of it, give. Mm. Yeah. Give, give, give. Because if you're stingy with your money, that's what keeps us stuck because we're mm. afraid or we want to hold on or we want to hoarder our money and keep us like, why you not want to pay a bill? A bill is due. Yes. Why you think that's why we get money so we can? But if yes. you understand value of money and understand that you put money as money as an energy and the more you put it out there, the more that it comes back to you. Pay your yes. time. Pay yourself first. We don't do that. If you don't pay yourself first, then you're going to, of course, you're going to keep going over that cycle over and over, over where mm. you pay your bills, you broke, and then you go back to work. You work those 40 hours, you get mm -hmm. a check, and you keep paying those bills. When you understand, for one, let me pay my tithe. God say, if you, if you pay your 10%, God will bless your 90. Yes. And that's yes. the only thing mm -hmm. that he said where he say, test me. You yes. pay ten percent. He he'll bless your ninety. You mm. can't be stingy with money. God, you know God don't need our money. He don't. We don't need that money. And then I don't. Uh, this one thing that I I hate when people say, "Oh, what a pastor this and he that what you what that pastor doing is between him and God." But you acknowledging your relationship with the Lord, you know that in that word it says to pay your ten percent. You doing your part. Mm. You doing and, your part. Yes. You pay yes. you you if you give God your 10 percent, He's gonna bless your ninety. Yes, so, I do that. Yes, yes. So start putting your give freely. Mm. I give freely. I receive. And don't give with an attitude. Give mm. give cheerfully. You know yes. what I'm saying? And, and sometimes we you know we get so caught up with money because we 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 want to order it, but we yes. don't know. You keep bringing yeah. that money. You bring it, push that money out there to come back to you in ways yes. that you will have no, no clue or ways. And, and it's just, you know, when I think about it, because I think about the goodness of Jesus, I think about yeah. the, the, the goodness of what he done for me when I didn't have, you know, when I didn't have it, I started giving. Girl, yes, yes. I started giving yes. and it don't yes. have to always be yes. money like, okay. If you don't have too much, go make some sandwiches. Go get go out to the needy. Go go yes. give to the homeless people. Yes. Or God said go to always with his orphanages and his widows. Go to an orphanage. Yes. Give go donate. Time. Go drop some yes. money or, or go spend. Go give something away. The more you give, it comes back to you. And that's one thing that we have to understand. Um, money is the energy. You you hit it right on you you said it so beautifully. I I could testify to this to that. The more I start giving back, the more I start donating my time to Ronald Playhouse. I love that organization. It's, cl it's close to my heart. 
the more I start, every time I see a homeless person, I created book bags where it has all everything that they need, food and stuff like that. And I always give five dollars here, two dollars here, and then give to the church. I start getting more. Yeah, I, I start finding the joy in giving and helping others. I'm like, okay. And then the more I start enjoying it and start helping others and seeing their face light up and things like that, and I start doing it in a positive way. And I changed my mindset, like, okay, when you give and help others, especially those who are close to you, I didn't look at it as, oh, they better give something back to me. I changed my mind, like, you're doing this out of kindness of your heart with good intentions. And then God just started to pour so much back into me. Everything I said that I, I wanted, everything I said that I needed, he gave it to me 20, like, 20 times and more. And anything that I lost, he doubled that. Uh huh. Double that. I lost something. I invested in someone. Uh, I gave them 20K. 20K. Because I believed in them. And they left. Left me. I was so heartbroken. And God humbled me because I started losing everything. And I didn't give to myself first. I didn't make sure I was straight. Uh huh. Soon as he humbled me and I asked for, you know, forgiveness, I, I repented and all that stuff, the more he was giving me little by little. And then he gave me little, then I saw a person was hungry. So I gave them my last. I would say, let's see, no lie, within three days, I got blessed for a job offer with a sign-on bonus that was 6,000. Then I got blessed with another job and they said, what do your heart desire? We'll pay you whatever amount you want and we'll double that. Now, God has gave me my dream job in a corporate healthcare facility. And now I'm at an executive level where I have the option to work from home. I have an option, I could pick up my, my child. There's no confusion. Amen. Everything I lost, he gave to me 20 times more. So that 20K I lost, I ended up getting it back within two months. Amen. And I paid off all my debt. Amen. See, sometimes we yeah. be thinking that it's a, it's a, sometimes life will have us thinking that we're in a situation where it's yes. for the bad. But oh, honestly, yeah. like I will break us down in order for him to build us back up. We think yes. that we're going through something or we think that we're in a situation that's like really going to tear us down, but it's actually putting us in a position to build us back up. And yes. we don't see those things until after, you know, uh, God, his thoughts are greater than ours. So we, that's why the Lord said, do not lean on our own understanding because what we may think is okay. Mm. We serve a, a, a powerful God where his thoughts are bigger than ours. So when you trust in him though, he will open the door. He'll make ways for you that no man can or open the door that no man can shut. You know, so yes. um, there's just blessings in giving. Um, and like you said, you know, you thought that that was a big investment for you to have gained, oh, you know, yes. to just give yes. away like that. But God yes. saw something greater for you. And, you know, yes. and that possibly needed to happen in order for you to he release you from that person. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but yes, there's always a, a blessing in giving. Yes. Um, freely yes. you give, freely I receive, and just give with a cheerful heart. Um, that's where majority of my blessings came. They came because I was always, I'm a giver. I'm yes. selfless. I'm naturally give. If it's something that I can do to help, I'm going to naturally do it. Yes. Without yes. nothing in return because I know who my father is. He created me to be this yes. way. Uh, no, well, it's, it's not for you. Yes. God yes. got me. You know what I'm saying? So yes. if I have it, I'm going to give it because I'm able to give. I know what yes. it's like when I didn't have anything. You know, I've been through poverty. I've been on food yes. stamps. I've been in every project that has mm -hmm. been that, that me growing up. But I understood stood that I don't have to be that way. Yes. I don't have to remain that way. Mm -hmm. I don't have to stay that way. I can grow. I can become bigger and better than what society has, you know, what I was made or born into. I don't have to do that. Mm. You know? So um, this is good. 
Yes. This is good. And I'm happy you said that because when we're learning about building credit and business credits and being entrepreneurs, the first thing we think, we we think that we're born in the ghetto where we don't see that we could go any further than that. Uh -huh. And they teach us that. And when we hold on to that image, like, oh, I'm only good for certain things, it deprive us to what God has blind us and what our true pur purpose are in this world. And the more knowledge we, we get, it's like we're constantly breaking these cycles. We're constantly like, okay, well, if if Chris over here in, in the hood, if he could get out and do this, then I know I can, but we'd be afraid to ask, how did you do it? How, how did you accomplish that? You're not no basketball player. You're not no entertainer. You're not this. How, how, how? And we see a lot of kids, young kids, especially young black men that get caught up in the streets of, you know, trying to get fast money that they lose their true potential of what they could be out here. The next Martin Luther King, the next Black Bill Gates, the next, you know, anything, they, they lose their true potential because they are still trapped in that society, what society is telling them, this is all you could be. And that's, yeah. very, that's very unfortunate. And we do need to educate our children they're not going to do it in the school system. And if they are doing a school system, you have to be in a private school setting to get that. I know my son, he used to go to private school and they taught him about finances. And I was like, well, they don't teach, why don't teach that at public schools? You know, so you got to pay top money to get top education and get life skills. That's unfair because there's people like us who can't afford private education. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. So, and there's a lot of black moms and black fathers. We're not taught that. We're learning ourselves. And it's like we constantly deprive. So we have to constantly educate. Knowledge is power. Education is power. We need to learn life skills to know that, you know, it's more out there better for us. Yes. And it starts with our belief. Like, you have to really believe, like, you know what? I believe in me. Mm. I know that I was not created to be just poor. Yes. I have dominion. You know, I know who's my father is. You know what I'm saying? You know, so when you believe, that's increases your faith. That yes. what makes you step out and do things, even though the unknown, but guess what? Faith. Yes. You know, you yes. have to have faith. You have to believe that you have to have something in your that you believe in your heart that you created for greatness. We're all created for greatness. Every last one of us, there's a gift inside of us that God has given us. Some have more gifts, some have talents, but there's something in all of us that will create room for us to prosper. Yes. We have to dig deep inside of ourselves to figure that out who it, whose we are and who we are and what it is that we have inside that we can give to the world because that's going to be your key to create wealth. Mm. And we're just not just talking about wealth in your pockets, which that is a plus. We talk about wealth in your life and everything. You touch yes, you, you know your health. You know, yes. Um, one thing of being about being an entrepreneur is honestly, it's just a self development with a compensation plan attached to it. Mm. I'm constantly okay. learning. I'm constantly growing. I'm constantly becoming who I am, who I was already destined to be. Mm. So I don't watch TV. I don't sit down and watch Netflix. I don't got time to see what's going on on the news. Why? Because I'm creating yes. who I am chosen or who I'm yes. called to be. I'm learning who I am. I'm learning who I need to become. I'm yes. learning so much about the life. So because that compensation plan money is going to come to me when I become a value person and I have value when I'm able to give things and, and teach you things and let you know, like, look, Hey, you can do this. Yes. That's where my money comes from. So yes. if we understand, like, look, there's greatness inside of us. It takes for us to can bring it out of us. Yes. Mm, yes. But believing in yourself and putting in 
praying and putting things into actions. I, I, girl, yes, you're speaking the truth right here. Yeah. So, girl, let's talk business. When I'm an entrepreneur too, you're an entrepreneur too. You help me with my oh my goodness. Stop, wait, tell us about your business first. I didn't even get into that first. Before I say what I'm gonna say, tell us uh, what people can reach you at too, and uh, and stuff that you do, and how you help always when it comes to fixing their credit and getting things off the ground. Okay, so first and foremost, I am a life coach, a life strategist, success coach. Um, I help individuals overcome past traumas, things that happen in our lives, things that, you know, that may stop us from growing because we have all experienced something in our lives that have hindered us or probably stopped us. So, um, and that was because I was at a point uh, a long time ago where I needed me, where I am at right now, I needed me years ago. Yes. And I'll never forget when I was going through my own issues and I'm like God if you can get me out of this I promise you I will bring other people with me so that's one of the reasons why I became a life coach I said you know what and a lot of people say you don't need to be certified now I do have credits um I've been through um Dr. Faith Wakoma and if you know um um tony gaskin he's a good coach in relationships but i went through both of their courses just to have certification underneath my name yeah. however but this is something naturally this is something that i love to do i love to help people and i overcome things that i have happened in my life that i overcame i want to let people know that you can overcome these same situations too yeah so, well like i said that is a coach however i also teach financial liter literacy and credit restoration so if you need your credit restored or if you want to build your credit i'm that person that you can come and you can contact me or latika charles on facebook instagram or you can contact me um uh 815-713-0604 text credit and that's just um my platform is still building and still um creating opportunities and yes. platforms but right now, that's the way that you can reach me. And Girl, I really yes. Help to help. Yes. And let's talk about what credit cards should people apply for when it comes to building a business credit? When it comes to the use, can they use their EIN number to establish business credit? And if so, how? And what credit cards can they apply for? Um, so to establish business credit, it's a process. I can't say too much because I'm actually creating a course to actually help people. But um, it's business, you do need, you have to make sure all your ducks are in order. You want to make sure that it establishes register. You want to make sure you do have an EIN. You want to make sure that you do have a uh, address, a business phone number. You want to make sure that you have everything in order. Then once you do that, you establishing credit because, like I said, having no credit is the same as bad credit. So then there's three type of tiers that you will have to go through uh, in order to get capital, in order to uh, increase your score to report it. There's a dozen brass. You have to register your EIN. You have to get all of that in order. Yes. In order for you to start reporting, uh, gaining or uh, building your business credit. Yes. So yes. it's a process. Um, like I said, if you want more information, reach out to me or yeah, reach out to Miss Riviera. She'll give you my information. But there's a process to establishing your business credit. However, you definitely want to make sure that your personal credit is A1 as well. Um, mm -hmm. Some stuff you can get it without your personal credit. But nine times out of ten, why not get? Why work on your business without getting your personal together? You want to yes. make sure both of them are hand in hand. Girl, yes, I am with you like that. I think people really believe that when they get the business, they're going to get money's going to come so quickly. And they think that, uh, okay, I could just hurry up and get a credit card. I could hurry up and get a gas card. I could hurry up and get all this stuff. Or I could go to the bank and they're going to give me $10,000 because I have this EIN number. And that's not correct. So it's, it's trust. Yeah. It's yeah. trust. They have to be able to trust you. So like the same way if you go to self lender or you get a secure credit card, it's no different from when you start in a business. You have to get a, a tier one card. Um, and that's I, I don't have all my information right now, but you have to start off small. 
make sure that you're making these payments, um, monthly payments on time so you can build. Like mm. I said, you know, the payment history, you want to have some type of building so you they are, they are able to trust you. Yes. And can we touch on real quick? I know a lot of people have asked me and you you know, you're, you're the expert, not, not me. Um, when it comes to open up a business, uh, what are the, what should they look for when they, they're trying to open up their business? Should they get an LLC? or corporation or you know what's the difference between those type and if so which one they should get is where can they go to get one to get an llc or corporation or anything like that to start their business to get an ein number um each business is different um s corps you can be by yourself for a liability that's the llc it's really to protect your brand or protect you and your business um that varies from person to person uh, but you can always, to establish that or get the information, you can always go to the state um, to establish, to get you an LLC or S-Corp. So however it is that you want to, it just depends on what type of business that you're running to, in order for you to establish yourself the properly way. Once you have that, like I say, you go to the state and you can um, figure that out. It, it's not that much. It don't cost as much. Um, I honestly went through someone that helped me get my stuff together. Well, I didn't have to really uh, worry about all of that. She literally got my paperwork and prepared me properly because uh, one thing I learned as a business woman is to delegate. If I don't have time to do it, I'm going to find somebody else to do it for me. And that's one thing that I have done to have to make sure that I was actually uh, legit. But like I said, there's all just go down. You can go to the secretary of state. You can ask these questions, research everything yes. that you need. You have it within you. And if you don't know, you got to figure it out. You just have to figure it out. Sometimes people will pay for it. And, you know, that's that's their prerogative. But you have to take some time to invest in yourself by understanding these things and learning for yourself, because you don't want nobody to do all of this for you without you not knowing Yes, yes, yes. Please be involved when it comes to these paperwork that you sign. Please read everything before you sign and also do your research to make sure the person, whoever you get, is giving you the truth when it comes to filling out these forms, LLC, for you can be successful. Because there's our people out there, they, they be scamming. <laughs> That's, that is it's a lot of that going on right now. Yes, yes, there's a lot of that going on right now. So after that, what else, when it comes to us, let's go back to building credit. There's things that we can remove. After we remove stuff, we keep saying the self-lender card. Can you go into more details about the self-lender card that people that don't know? Uh, self-lender, basically, you're paying yourself. Um, there, If you come to me, there's, um, uh, there's a, a card that, I can help you get signed up on where basically what you do is put $200 of your 200 to $300 of your own money on a card mm -hmm. and you use it as a secure credit card. Now, when you put this money on there, that do not mean you go crazy. You utilize no more than 30% yes. and you make the payments on time. So that helps get reported to, uh, it gets reported to help increase your score. So self lender like so, you you make an agreement within um, a year span of how much money. Let's say you decide to pay $50 a month. Yes. Mm -hmm. You make a payment to self. You pay $50 a month on time because every time you make this payment, it is being reported to the credit bureaus. It is helping you increase your score. So you make those monthly payments. Let's say, okay, you hit the ninth, you hit the 12th payment. You, you agreed to pay this for a whole year. They write you a check. So they send you your money back. Yeah, see? So basically increasing your score by help saving you money by making payments on time. Mm. You can't beat that. You sure can't. You can't. That's a way of saving. That's a way of helping you save and increasing your score. People don't know that. People do not know that. They they just think they just think that you know. Okay, <laughs> the little one talking in the back. 
Um, people, they're not knowledge. They don't know that at all. You know, you were the one who taught me that when it comes to when I was fixing my credit. You told me like, hey, self link this is what you do. And when you introduce that to me, I'm like, what? I did not, what? Like, come on now. And a lot of people, especially African-Americans, we always think, go bankrupt. File bankruptcy. Chapter 7, Chapter 13, file bankruptcy. Get everything you want. Go go crazy. And then file bankruptcy and you're going to be good. You're going to be okay. Start all over. And a lot of people don't understand that when you file bankruptcy, it's really hurting you. It's damaging your credit. I mean, can you elaborate more on that? I mean, you know, file bankruptcy. It is. Um, see, so I don't want to talk too much about it, but um you can when you do file bankruptcy we can get that removed <laughs> so i would just suggest it but it can also be removed but um man it's just so much that you can learn about uh bankruptcy or learn about credit because credit is just nothing but trust um cre credit can be stressful if you don't understand how it works but once you understand it and how you utilize credit the right way, uh, you can use credit as a way to come up instead of tearing you down. Uh, I actually had a friend that had bankruptcy and it's removed. So I wouldn't suggest it, you know, I wouldn't. But I mean, if you was to do it, it, it can get it. You can get it removed. It technically can. But. What's the point of doing that? And if you do it again, and you're going to be right back in the same place. So it's important that you understand how things work so we can stop, we can break these generational curses and understand how to utilize things the right way. And that's, that's what, that's crazy. Like you said that we filed bankruptcy. I did not know you could remove bankruptcy. That's good to know. A lot of people don't know that. And then, like you said, a key, the key point, what's the point of doing all this if you're going to keep doing the same pattern? Because it's like now you, you have the knowledge to know, oh, I can move this off. I don't got to wait seven years for it to fall off. I, I know how to take it off. And then you get back in debt, and then you do it again, and you're just like, oh, I can just do it again. Mm -hmm. See, People that's understand. yeah. one thing that I've had a lot of my clients, once things fall off and they increase their score, it drops. And they wonder, like, how did it drop? So, well, now you have to manage it. Mm. You have to understand how money works and you have to manage your things. See, we, budgeting tools. You have to understand, like, to pay yourself first or put some money up. Because yeah. if you don't know these things, you'll be right mm -hmm. back in the same cycle over and over and over again. That's one thing that yeah. I do. It's not just about credit restoration. It's financial literacy. First, I want to know why you're trying to increase your score what you trying to do you trying to buy a car you trying to buy a house what's some valuable as to why you doing what you need to do because when you understand your why it's going to hold you accountable as to make sure you do the right things on time because how you expect that you want to buy a house but you can't make your car note on time or you can't make your credit card payment on time how do you think you're going to get that house how do you think you're yes. going to get approved for a FHA loan for to get a house if you can't manage the little that you already have right now. Yes, girl. So, yes, that's important. You have to understand, manage the little that you have right now. I don't, I'm not knocking nobody who's working at McDonald's or who working a nine to five mm -hmm. or whatever you're working. Start there. Start there. Start putting some money up. Pay your tithes and then pay yourself mm -hmm. first. If you put this, if you put 20% of your check up every day, and it, no matter how much you make it, whether you $15, $20, you could create compound interest where over time, when you look back, you realize you got a lot of money sitting there that you didn't have because you was putting 20% up. Mm. It gives you value as to why you're working when you know, okay, I get paid Friday. I'm going to take $100 and put it up. I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to put it up. And then every week or every time you get paid months, now you look back and you got all of this money sitting there. Yes. Yes. You're being financially responsible. 
Yes, and you're budgeting wisely. I, I think that's when we miss a key point. We always will put something aside. And when we see it, then we're like, oh, I can spend all the money I have now because I have this $100 right here. And then we hurry up and spend it. We never train ourselves to say, hey, imagine that's not there. Forget it. Don't touch it. Don't do this. Now you, you're left with $400, $500 left now you have this 500 dollars left you already put away a hundred dollars now you need to focus you get paid you got a whole week a whole week where you don't get paid wait a whole week yeah in some days you don't get paid till that next friday some people take that 500 dollars or 400 dollars and they'll spend it just like that with we'll it just like that and then they'll have no money for gas or nothing because they didn't they didn't budget right correctly I was like that. Working at Chrysler for the past eight years, no longer there, but getting paid every week. Um, I get paid on Friday. I'll be broke by Monday. I have enough money to stretch to last me until Friday. And then I'm like, okay, well, I get paid every week. And that's how I was until I had to really start thinking like, you know what? This became a cycle. Mm. Where it's like, I have to break this. How do I expect to get more? If I'm going to keep doing this over and over and over and over again. And it took for when I realized that my job was clean and cut where I'm like, okay, I don't have nothing to show for. Mm. Mm. Many yeah. of us can work a job. You know, we get paid, but we really don't have nothing to show for. Or mm. we're getting that rat race. or we're re It's like we're on that cycle because all we're doing is working to pay bills. Now, let's think of it this way. If you was to work and you actually put some up, pay yourself first, it's so much more value in why you're working. Mm. You won't really be just saying you're working to pay bills. You put money up and you actually saving because you know you have a goal or there's something that you're working towards. When you understand that you you work different, you work harder, you you will have a reason as to why you're working instead of like, oh my gosh. I'm just working to pay bills. I'm working to pay bills. I'm working to pay bills. Pay yourself first. That's mm -hmm. the reason why you're working. Yes. See, and that's what we we never we never pay ourselves. We always pay everybody else, our bills, everything, and we forget about ourselves. We do. And the more we forget about ourselves, then we overspend. I call it overspend. I used to do it too. I, I over. Whew. Girl, let man, me have a good chat. Oh, man, I had, hold on, I, that was so bad. I had that so bad, like, so bad. Yes. But I had to learn, yes. like, uh-uh, you know what? This is getting out of hand. You need to start putting some money up because you never know. And that's really why I started doing what I started to do. Like, you know what? I'm bigger than this job. I'm bigger than this nine to five. I've been working here and had nothing to show for It's time that I switched some stuff up. And that's when I started making some changes. That's when I started believing in myself. That's when I started to say, you know what? In order for me to grow, I have to change something within me. I like that. And we're going to leave it right there. I love that. That was so beautifully said. Work in and have nothing to set for, and then value and believe in yourself and making a difference and stopping these repeated cycles and trusting and having faith in God. You know, beautifully said. And I, I just want to say thank you again for joining the podcast. No you, problem. Oh my goodness. Like when you were talking, I was getting chills. <laughs> like for real, I was just like, what? What? Come on now. Yeah. Um, very, you inspire me every day. I see what you're doing. You know, you're very joyful. I could just feel it every time I see you post something on Facebook. You just, you're always empowering women, you empower people, and yeah. your knowledge on things is just amazing. And I know your business is going to continue to prosper, it's going to continue to do things, it's going to help our people and our children. For we could have that Black Wall Street again, and for we could yes. have like kings and queens, like we deserve that is ours. And bringing God in it is just we all need faith and we all need prayer. And you know, I just want to say 
Thank you, Queen, for doing it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's such an honor to um, be on your platform. Like I said, this is not, this is only the beginning. Um, God is using me. Let his will be done in my life. And all I'm doing is just being a willing vessel. But one thing I understand now is that it's time for us to break these generational curses and upfront uh, generational blessings. And it comes from us. If a millionaire yes. isn't created, if there's not a millionaire in your family, then that millionaire comes from you. Woo, y'all. If y'all don't follow this girl page <laughs> and invest in fixing your credit, establishing business credit, and take on this process this journey this healing journey that she is trying to help us heal from our trauma our inner child like please follow her and please take her course and let her help you for you could be your great version of yourself and walk in within your purpose yes. like come on well queen i just want to say thank you you know i'm gonna have you come back again i'm here yes. i'm here thank you for having yes. me because I want you to, you know, as soon as you get everything, more and more books and all that, I'm going to give me a copy. I know that. Yes. And for you to just, you know, give, you know, educate my viewers too. I'm going to, of course, send them all your way. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate it. Like I said, stay blessed. Thank you, Queen, for having me. And this is not the first time that I'll be joining you multiple, like, Come, let me come back over here and talk about relationship because I love when you hit on that. But uh, <laughs> that's where I'm going yeah. next with you know things that I have going for myself. But thank you, it's an honor to be here on your platform and um, blessings to you. Blessings to you. Thank you, thank you. All right, guys, that was Latika. You heard it first. Please follow her page. A very intelligent woman, strong queen. Let her help you for you could reach your true purpose, what God has for you. Bye, you guys. Bye.